Hey guys, it's Taka from Legion of Chaos. Got another wonderful video for you today. Something homegrown, something from the heart. Uh, our Let's Play series has kind of been on hold. We've had some technical issues with the Nether, but they're being sorted out. Episode 3 should be hitting YouTube uh, sometime really soon. I personally have been doing another Let's Play series with a YouTuber called Retsemvi. Um, he's been doing his own thing. Uh, you can check out his channel. It'll be linked right here. And below, check him out to see the Let's Play going on there. It's a lot of fun, a lot of awesome mods. Uh, having a really good time. He's a really good guy. So check him out, show him some love. Uh, what I have here is I'm actually standing in my house, actually. Uh, this is the Legion of Chaos Feed the Beast server. We played on it uh, for a number of months together and uh, worked really hard on this. And this is actually Fort Taka. This is my uh, home where I've been chilling, so I just thought I'd give you guys a little tour, mostly for posterity, also partially for me, uh, in case the server goes bye-bye, I'd be able to see some of the work I did. Now, everything you're about to see, uh, minus a couple of quick fixes I did for this video, I know there's still cobble over there, I actually didn't notice that, I did a couple of quick uh, aesthetic fixes uh, to some of the texturing and materials, but other than that, everything you're about to see was done in legit survival on this server. As you can see, it's got a beautiful view down to the valley below there. The entrance is down. they got that wonderful waterfall. Uh, that structure over there is legit, uh, that floating bit there. And I built all of this out under here. So I'm just going to give you guys a little tour about what we're going on here. So let's proceed to the workroom. Oh, I'm wearing, from Fort, you see that, I am wearing the uh, modular power suit armor and the boots from the portal mod. Those are long fall boots. Loved them so much, couldn't give them up for the uh, modular version. So let's go ahead down into the workroom. This is where all the magic happens. Uh, this is where my quarries send all of their materials, things like that. So uh, let's start on a little tour. Let's start with the most uh, prominent portion of the room, the crafting wall. Uh, the crafting wall over here, everything comes in from an item tesseract up there from the quarries. Uh, comes down here to the Red Power 2 sorting machine. Gets sorted by colors. Uh, anything not sorted here is sorted to the color white. So we'll see that in a minute. Yellow items go over here to my recyclers. Uh, I've got the primary recycler here, the secondary overflow recycler here. Using the uh, the non-vanilla hoppers, this is of course 147. This is a uh, Feed the Beast. Direwolf 20 pack 147. Uh, so this is sort of for overflow and things like that. I've got dirt, cobble, and gravel coming in here. Some uh, buildcraft autarkic gates through some buildcraft pipes to pull out the scrap produced from the recyclers, heading up to be resorted into the system down the white line. Uh, down here we have a uh, pulverizer from. Thermal expansion. Uh, right next to it, I've got my extractor and a macerator. These are both manual. They're not hooked up to the system except by the uh, Industrial Craft 2 uh, copper cabling for electricity. Uh, I use these if I need like incidental stuff done, but most uh, all the auto stuff goes through the pulverizer, which is sent on over most of the time to the induction furnace, uh, which is left on, of course, uh, and the induction furnace, a target gate out to the uh, buffer chest. I'll explain the buffer chest in a minute. From the white line, the scrap can either go here or it can go up to my mass fab uh, up there. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And this right here, of course, uh, we'll also take a look at when we go up to the surface. Got a little bit of Thomcraft Nitor here to light it up. There was nobody to get torches on this wall. As you can see, it's all used up. So I went ahead and used a little Nitor to get it uh, there. Uh, moving around to the left, all my thermal expansion engines, uh, engines, machines, uh, running with power underneath the floor. Some of them are connected to each other, like the, uh, uh, the magma crucible and the liquid transposer, things like that are available next to each other. Railcraft stuff here, I've got the rolling machine. Uh, I think there's a carpenter? No, it's centrifuge. Yes, uh, some APR stuff here. The, uh, the thermionic fabricator, which can be turned on and off with a wrench down here. That's why I left this little trap door so it's not sucking power all the time. And here is my main carpenter, yes. Uh, what was I making last? Oh, I wonder if I think that's a beelizer? Yes, I believe that's a beelizer. Uh, cool. Uh, as we move around over here, of course, I got the Red Power 2 alloy furnace. Yes, I did not. Oh, that's from Red Alloy. Yes. Uh, I did not go for the blue electric alloy furnace. I never got that big into, except for the stuff you see in the crafting wall over there in the power system upstairs. I never got that much into uh, red power stuff. Didn't do anything with frames, things like that. Should have, but didn't. Jukebox, anvil, 
uh, pattern encoder for my uh, auto crafter with applied energy. So we'll get we'll get there in a minute. Tinker's table for my modular power suit, which I'm wearing, of course. Uh, moving around over here, we have long-term storage up here. I have connection to some of the other players through this ender chest right here. All my mistcraft books heading to all kinds of really cool places. Uh, good stuff. This is our nexus. We built a nexus in a void age that links to everybody who's been participating in this particular server. So this would go there. I'll show you the nexus in a bit. Rainmaker to keep the rain away and a nice little. Uh, view of the outside here and the valley and the little ocean over there. NPC village off in that direction. Good stuff. Uh, moving further around the room, more long-term storage. I'll explain these guys in a second, but this chest here is holding my gates and chipsets from the Buildcraft assembly table. Nine lasers in the roof. Uh, I had to run a little bit single player to find out exactly how high I could put these lasers so they'd still work. Makes quite a light show uh, when you start working on something. Pew pew! Very nice, right? Yes, yes, very nice, very nice. All the way to blue. Yep, there it goes. Uh, so let's turn that off. Don't need that. And that gets sent under the floor all the way over here. Got some Zycraft lights uh, in the floor and ceiling. It's a little disorganized because it all took off really quickly and I was running really fast. Uh, over here we have a squeezer. Uh, the squeezer sent to a tesseract down in my holding tanks below. Over here is a carpenter. Yes, another carpenter with some seed oil in it. I used to make my uh, apiaries and frames, things like that, uh, just to turn things on and off with the liquiducts. This is my switch wall. All of this is being powered by uh, Chicken Bones wireless redstone mod. Uh, behind there is all the wireless transmitters and these switches turn on and off the power systems, things like that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Applied Energistics. Here's the Applied Energistics network. Uh, everything in this chest is being imported. If you look right here under the floor, there's an import bus right there. So it all gets imported into the Applied Energistics network. Uh, and that all comes out here. I have access to my entire network. All of my inventory is all left here, except for a little bit of storage in the other chests that you'll see around. So I've got 5.5k nickelite, 4.5k redstone, plenty of obsidian, marble, uh, lots and lots of oak wood, as you can see, 25,000 scrap. Ridiculous. Uh, once you finish the quantum suit, there's kind of no point to the mass fab anymore, especially if you're running a system like this that just pulls in so many resources. There's like no point in continuing. I've got everything labeled here. Uh, pumps, things like that. Hydra head from the Twilight Forest, etc. So let's turn that off. Uh, like I said, this does have the auto crafter, so if you. S oh. Oh, 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 oh. I think the last of the juice drained from my MFSU. I'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, and this is the. Uh, it'll let me know if I'm missing any materials for my auto crafting. Uh, cool, I think that clears out this room. Let's take a look over here. You can see my tier 5 blaze shard inside of a soul cage. So if I hit the more blaze rods, bam, the blazes start to spawn down in the water down there, which is really cool. And if you look closely, got a little secret going on there. So let's turn this off. Uh, let's go check. Oh, oh, oh. Levitators are turned on. Hold on. Nope, get up, come up. There we go. You see I've got the melee turtles here, which of course count as player kills. Big kudos to Direwolf20 uh, himself for inspiring me to make this build. All the melee turtles lined up programmed to attack whatever's in front of them, and a brain in the jar to soak up the experience points from Thomcraft 3. Very nice. Uh, so I get all the experience, and the blaze rods are hit, hit the red power 2 transposers, are sent right up this pneumatic pipe up to the storage you saw up here. Uh, we used to use it as a cage for melee battles and things like that, so I also had to collect other items that were getting stuck in the transposer system instead of just blaze rods. As you see, got a nice stack of blaze rods here. Uh, that's the uh, assembly table thing. And here's my cold coke uh, from my cold coke oven downstairs. We'll take a look at that. I think that wraps up everything in this area, so let's go ahead down one level. Darn new power suit for being so awesome. Uh, here we go, the coal coke oven. Currently not running, nothing in the hopper, I don't think. Uh, Yep, uh, we do have an our target gate here to pull out the cold coke, send it up to the barrel up top, and of course an activated uh, cr uh, liquiduct for the creosote oil that's produced. Over here we got the blast furnace for steel, the auto crafter for applied energistics, everything hooked up here, wireless signal to the uh, dark cable to turn off all the peripherals and just leave like the import bus running. Uh, got the interfaces here for an electric oven and a macerator so I can cr craft things that need to be smelted and, uh, and or pulverized with the auto crafter, the auto crafting computer and import it back into the network. What is this doing here? This is my compressor, industrial craft 2 compressor. What's it? I don't remember why I put it here. Maybe this was the only exposed bit of, uh, industrial craft cabling that I had. 
uh, and all the crafting wall stuff up there and all of its piping into the import bus over here. Here's the hard drives for Applied Energistics. Oh yeah, they're not receiving power. I must have turned off the MFSU. And the Wi-Fi. Got, I've got Wi-Fi in here. Uh, that's the wireless access point with a couple of wireless boosters, or just one wireless booster. I thought there was more than one. Uh, so I can access my inventory and such from anywhere inside the house. Uh, over here we have our first Tesseract, uh, an energy Tesseract heading to our first quarry, uh, powered with these electric engines from the Industrial Craft uh, power system. These are all upgraded, if I'm not, some of them are upgraded. None of them are upgraded? Yes, one of them is upgraded with the intricate circuit board for putting out more power and efficiency, things like that from uh, forestry. I think that clears out this floor. Oh, yes, our main power is going, coming from this redstone energy cell right here, and as you can see, it's fully charged. This leads up to the... Uh, first of all, this Tesseract heading off to the quarry, uh, which is powered by here. I can turn on and off the quarry. Uh, it lets it send power systems uh, to the quarry downstairs, which I'll show you. All of my thermal expansion engines, engines, machines up there. The Zycraft lights, very nice. Uh, I think that's everything on this floor. There's the pipe for the uh, assembly table sending over to its receptacle here. So let's, we'll show you where that lava is coming from. Let's go down one more floor. Uh, here's my arcane levitators from Thomcraft. Let's turn them off. They're kind of annoying me. Creosote oil tank from the uh, the Coke oven above. Lava tank being pump pumped in via this tesseract, this liquid tesseract from the Nether, uh, being pumped out to these magmatic engines, which is my main source of power. Pay, pay no attention to the high-powered boiler that's sitting there, completely unused in the corner. It's not unloved, just unused, because uh, this provides enough power to keep everything charged up. Uh, to my redstone energy cell here with a logic gate next to it uh, using some red power to uh, alloy cable to let it know when to turn on and off the magmatic engines uh, to power that up. Yep, uh, over here is my seed oil tank. As you can see, absolutely kicking with seed oil. This is linked from the uh, squeezer above and sends back through this tesseract up to the carpenter as needed uh, to keep the carpenter full. As you can see, not doing a lot with forestry seed oil. Anyway, so this is the storage tank. Yeah, I've got my Aquas accumulator hooked up to the boiler, but it's just, it's not, it's not, anyway. So let's, uh, let's head back up. Oh, right, levitator's right. Make it work. Oh, 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 only one levitator turned on. Hang on, let's see if it'll do it now. E no, okay, we're gonna have to fly. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead upstairs. Uh, let me show you briefly right here, just one of the exit. Here's the uh, spawner down there, the blaze spawner. You can get a good view of the uh, melee turtles right through the floor down there. Over here is some uh, more more short-term storage and another communication chest with, oh, hello. Valve, want you gone. Cute. Um, I'll take that uh, to one of the other players. Oh, Rhett Semtha, there he is. That's the guy I'm doing the Let's Play series with. Uh, nether wart farm, all this stuff. Yeah, let's go up here first. Again, I'll explain this pipe coming from the surface. And here's my pneumatic pipe going to my mass fab over there. But first, uh, some solar panels, red power two solar panels up on the roof there leading to the battery pack, which is powering my sorting machine that you saw downstairs. Uh, everything running along here, the, oh, I can't, if I, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, ah, okay, here we go. Uh, here's the lasers for the assembly table, all of the transform power transformers, uh, my chunk loader, uh, here's the uh, relays from the from the uh, tesseract that's pulling items from the quarries, they send them into the system to be sorted. Here's my miscellaneous stuff chest that I always meant to attach a relay to and never did. Uh, here's a relay for the scrap to send it back through the system. Uh, what else? You know, it just occurred to me as I'm looking at this. This may be the source of one of the bottlenecks that I was having, because it's connected to this relay here. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I never researched that. Every once in a while, it would like stop sending systems through the uh, items through the system. Anyway, chunk loader, chicken bones, chunk lo bones, chunk loader keeps all my quarries and stuff active and plants growing. Uh, let's step over here to the MFSU. Uh, right here, fully charged. Things like that. Here's where it's turned off. Let's flick it on real quick. Very nice. Oh, yep. And immediately they start charging. Something's drawing power. Wow, what sucked all that power? My, apparently all the power just juiced up everything down there really quickly. So here are my uh, geothermal generators, powered from the tank downstairs, powered from the nether, uh, coming up through liquiducts. Uh, the mass fab is right here. I had a whole 
inventory manager system between these bar scrap barrels and this thing, but I couldn't. It didn't want to cooperate with putting the right numbers, and I ended up with a whole bunch of scrap bouncing through the through the pneumatic pipes. So I did away with that system, and I piped straight into the mass fab. If that doesn't work, it goes into the barrel, and if that's full, uh, the scrap just goes into the applied energistics network over there. Uh, this was the original way up, as you can see now that I've got you know everything flying and whatnot. Uh, and there's the rainmaker down there. All right, next. Moving on, moving over here, this is the farm floor, uh, all the farming over here. I have a tier 5 uh, chicken spawner. That switch right there controls that. I hate spawning the chickens. Oh, I already did. So back here, uh, I was planning on having spawners for all of the different animals, but never got around to it using the red power bundled cable to sort of control each one that I wanted. Uh, cows with a feed station that's currently not feeding, so I've got plenty of cows. I don't need any more cows. My loyal servant. I named him Francois. He was a gift from another player on the server, and he keeps this area. Whoa, tidy and just full. Oh, poor guy. Here, put your there. Put your egg away. Poor guy. Here, just get rid of the. Get rid of the... Oh dear. Oh dear. Not good. Not good. Not good. It's not. It's not. I guess I'll do that in creative mode. I'll be back later. Pigs, sheep, cows, thumbcraft. Uh, infusion altar. <laughs> I was doing a lot of thumbcraft at a time, so I got tired of sleeping through the night, so I put a bed in here. Uh, here's the soul forge from the old version of soul shards uh, to create the soul shards that way from diamonds, I think it was. Ten soul essence and a diamond. That sounds sounds right. Crucible. Uh, thumbcraft stuff for my thumbcraft research. Very cool. Uh, a cactus farm. Over here, the wither battle arena. All the convenience of the nether in your own home, and to keep it from being obliterated, uh, I have the modular force field system running. Right over here, the projector is down there, and if I throw the switch, puts up a containment force field, I can build the wither inside there and pop inside kill him with no damage done to the house. Very handy. Uh, again, nice view of the valley. Not so nice view of the back of my crafting wall, but that's okay. Um, I was expanded to, intended to expand more in this direction, but I couldn't think of what else to put. Uh, let's go down to the dungeon floor. Again, here's my uh, here's another view of my auto crafter blast furnace, things like that. This is the dungeon floor. I've got uh, cave spiders in there, and I'm running red power two lights, so I can throw the switch and spawn a cave spider like that. Go in, fight it, get some experience, etc., etc. The major skeleton from the twilight forest. He spawns in here. Then I had a zombie spawn in here, but I got enough zombies killed to create a tier five shard. So it's inside the soul cage. I can spawn the zombies with that switch right there. Uh, very cool. Another nice view of the uh, nether, nether blaze farm cage in there. Uh, let's head upstairs, I think, before we check out the outside. So through here is the uh, enchanting room. Books that I've enchanted, things like that, and in keeping with the booking theme, my miscraft writing desk, no, writing desk right here, and book binder. As you can see, it gets all sorts of mileage. <laughs> um, coming through here, the, oh, that, <laughs> The meth lab, apparently. I didn't I didn't make that sign. Uh, all the brewing stands that... I don't think I made all of these either, but I use them infrequently. Uh, outside is the gardens. We'll take a look at that in a moment. This used to be my nether portal, but I needed it for the uh, spawners for the chickens and things like... Hello, get, get off there. No, get, get off there. Okay. Anyway, so I broke it down because I have uh, miscraft books going into the nether there. Uh, portal for the... Oh, that's turned off randomly. Why can't I see... That texture. Anyway, that's the uh, Twilight Twilight Forest portal. I like the yellow flowers. Anyway, let's go take a look at the garden garden area out here. I've got uh, sh you know sugar cane uh, sugar cane growing here. I've got corn here. I've got red power two uh, flax over here. Carrots over here. Uh, trees over here. Uh, trees for the cocoa. I've got some trees from the Twilight Forest, some of the rainbow trees going on. I've got rubber trees for industrial craft, all sheared, of course, so I can get at the rubber knots. Uh, here's the uh, Red Power 2 uh, solar network that powers my battery and subsequently the... Uh... Oh, sorry about that. Didn't mean to whack the microphone. And the uh, sorting machine down there. Here's the, uh, the, uh, the, the seeds for the that wheat, right? Somewhere buried in this copse of trees is my Steve's cart tree farm. Now that pipe you saw down in the... Oh, here he is. Can I... Can't can't access him? Oh, maybe he's, he's stuck in there. Uh, completely overgrown because I turned him off. Uh, through this uh, cargo manager here, it sends down through that pipe that you saw going straight into the Applied Energistics Network from straight through the roof uh, that I said we'd see later. Well, that's where that comes from. And I ended up with so much wood. And You saw it was like two and a half thousand wood. 
I just turned it off because it was just too much. There's too much stuff going on. <laughs> going in there, I had no use for all of this wood and it was taking up all of my hard drive storage space in Applied Energistics. If you come down this way, you will see my brief attempt at forestry. Uh, all these trees were put here so they'd mutate with each other and of course they didn't because uh, I never really got into the bees very much. I built a very primitive uh, automation system, just never really... Never really put it to use <laughs> one stinking flower to like power the... Anyway, so that's what's going on here. Uh, that's the ocean over there. Yep, so I was hoping for them to for them to crossbreed the trees. They never did. Over there is my th uh, the little Thomcraft, uh, Thomcraft uh, spawn dungeon thing over there. That's where I found my portal gun. I was really excited when I found the portal gun. I was absolutely squeeing all over the server. It was great. Uh, I was like, eek. You know, I was just so happy about it. People couldn't shut me up. So, uh, I think that's, uh, no. Two things to do. Let's go take a look at the construction floor. Uh, this right here is a, uh, Portal 2 mod, uh, portal spawner. And if I have a wireless remote here, wow, to turn it on. And here we are at the mining floor. So you can see a whole lot of nothing. 64 by 64 mining cube, starting at, uh, Y level 32, because I wanted all the iron, uh, not the iron, the gold and the diamonds. By the way, don't start at Y level 32, just letting you know, because you miss out on all the copper, which was really a problem. <laughs> I had to go mining for it manually, and I had to place a, uh, a, a second quarry higher up in the world uh, that was powered by the industrial craft that you saw earlier. Here we go, their tesseract sending um, sending the uh, items up to the sorting wall and then receiving the power into my quarry right here. Uh, yep, so that's that right there. Uh, what else is going on here? Yep, just been quarrying all of this out. It's pretty, pretty impressive, pretty awesome. Nether? Where does that go? I don't know where that goes. Yep, back through the portal. Yep, wonderful. Uh, back into the living room, if you will. The wonderful view down to the valley floor. Uh, I have a roommate who sort of lives over there. Uh, a real-life friend of mine who's like, Oh, your house is awesome. Can I move in? Sure, you get that corner. So he took that corner. Zoo plans? I don't know, I don't know what that's about. Anyway, apparently he's got some master plan that I just don't know about. And that's, that's totally okay. So that's, uh, let's go take a look at the entrance. Here's the fire escape. Whee! I've got long fall boots, so I guess the water is sort of superfluous. This leads down to the uh, mining floor, down, way down there. Uh, and then here's the front door. Front door. Yeah, it's a sort of unassuming front door, right? And let's just take a look. These are modular power suit to glide over here, and there it is! Fort Taka, as seen from the outside. Pretty awesome. The living room, uh, the liquid storage, the machining area, the uh, the main workroom, the spawner, the blaze spawner over there, and our wonderful little floating terrain with some nice trees on top. Thank you guys for watching. Again, check out Rhett Samtha's uh, channel uh, to get some more Let's Play fun stuff, good mods. Uh, here's a link again, just in case you were wondering about it. And, uh... Yeah, hope to uh, see you guys around. We're going to probably be starting a new server soon, get everybody on board. Look for some new videos, and uh, keep coming, checking back here for the LOC Let's Play series. Once we get that nether stuff sorted out, we will be right back to give you guys more videos. Peace. See you all later.